Hey everyone, this is Rebs. Thank you for tuning in to my second interview for Rebs Gaming Interviews. And for this interview, I brought back Glenn, uh, who is a software engineer and Halo Infinite Forger. He was in the first interview, and if you missed it, he created the uh, first playable boss uh, in Halo Infinite Forge, and uh, thank you again so m and so much, uh, Clan, for uh, coming back because we have a lot of exciting content to show everyone. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, hey, hey everyone, hey Rebs, thank you for having me again. Uh, I'm good. I'm really excited because uh, we have a lot to to show, uh, a lot of new stuff that I think people will be happy. And we'll also go deep dive into some pretty advanced scripting. So that's going to be cool. Yeah, we have several new Forge creations um, or scripts uh, that Clint created. We're going to showcase them right um, about to now. And um, I'm just very excited to be able to show this content because some of the stuff were almost, or actually all of it is stuff we've never seen before. And we're going to go into a little deep dive of how uh, he created that playable boss that we talked about in the first interview. Um, so with that said, I'm going to allow Clint to take it from here and show us the first uh, creation that he made in Halo Infinite Forge. Yeah, so... Maybe some of you already guessed what it's going to be from what I tweeted yesterday and also what's on the screen with the parameter of the mode. But if you didn't guess, you'll see soon. Let's start the game. Yeah, we uh, he tweeted a little teaser. For this and uh, I retweeted it you may have seen but that's all I will say for now and this is the first time I've like watched someone live um, while playing Halo Infinite Forge this leaked build so this is fairly exciting for me uh, so let's get into it okay so First thing we can see is that the leak build is not perfect and some of the shader looks like they're not working. But anyway, maybe with the layout and the ball in the middle, you must have understood what's going on. Uh, let's see. I grab the ball and what would happen if I go to the other side uh, goal and I go on the goal Ball reset. Ball incoming. I just marked a point so yeah this is Griff Ball working uh, for some reason the display that I've created uh, is not working but since this is a leak build we cannot actually manipulate the scoring yet of the of the of the of the game like putting a one extra point when I I go to the the goal so what I did is that I created this uh, scoreboard that will uh, count the score of each team but it's not working uh, right now I don't know we'll see in forge it should work there uh, I'll have to debug this is still a a working progress map but as you can see I can uh, take the ball and the the whole script is actually uh, tracking who has the ball every time I, I grab the ball you can see that I jump it's just a, a debug um, event that I added that every time someone grabs the ball uh, it jumps a bit so it can tell me that the script is working indeed and there's also a tracker that if the carrier of the ball go on the opposite team uh, goal, then it will mark a point and put the ball back in the middle. So it's still working progress, but I think I can finish it pretty soon. 
and I'm going to need uh, at least uh, seven player to test it. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to DM me and we can set up a, a play test once it's finished. Of course, you must have the leak build and be on computer. But that's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, first of all, I really encourage, um, like you were just saying, uh, I really encourage other forgers to collaborate with you and um, other forgers because with your talents and uh, their specific talents, uh, you guys can create some awesome stuff. And also just having people to simply help you play tests is always a good thing. Uh, and also uh, the tweet that I was referring to right before this gameplay started that you tweeted and I retweeted is uh, a video of this functioning scoreboard just so in case people missed it they can see uh, gameplay of it working properly and it is quite smooth and clean i must say so definitely check it out if you missed it but um i did see people comment underneath those video uh, that video they were guessing griff ball uh so kudos to them or the people who guessed it and yeah this was the first time I'm uh, seeing this working, and uh, or Griff Ball in general in Halo Infinite. So this was awesome to see. Uh, great job on it so far. I know it's a work in progress, um, and I can't wait to see when it's uh, fully functional and working properly. Yeah, I'm just gonna showcase some cool uh, move that you can do. That's gonna be interested, but you can just drop the ball and then smash it with the with the the hammer. And like launch it. That's pretty cool. Let's see if awesome. it works. As you can see, we're gonna oh, be yeah. able to to do pretty insane moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's Maybe we can hop in forge just quickly, just to see the 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 scoreboard uh, that is actually working. Okay, so we're back. So unfortunately, this is a, a problem of the leak build, but seems like the map I did where there was the working uh, digital board uh, didn't save, actually. So the progress is lost, but not fully. I can just remake it um, quickly. But as you can see on the video clip before, that is from the tweet that I posted uh, recently. You can see it work and it will keep track of the score for each team and displayed it on that board. And now, um, Glenn, I'll let you take it over in a second, but we're about to uh, show another creation, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and are you going to, you want to tell them what we're about to see or should we just go right into it? Yeah, so a bit of, of context uh, on the last interview that I did with you. Uh, I talked about how I will create, when there's the full release, a um, complete uh, story mission, uh, a linear solo mission uh, with puzzle to solve, uh, AI to fight. Um, and... I talked about, I think, uh, some uh, scripted uh, sequence and some people were curious about it. I think you too, you were curious about it. And I just made a script today just to test a bit uh, how it would look like. So uh, bear in mind that this is still on the leak build, so we cannot, there's like a, a size limit, so we cannot... Uh, unleash the full potential. So I did what I could uh, within those restriction, but I think it will give you a pretty good idea on how it would look and what we can achieve with Forge. Yes, uh, I I was very curious about it, and I I posted a snippet of our last interview, which basically uh, should explain what you had just explained and i thought you know we would have to wait for this final build to see a glimpse of it or the completed version of it but 
here and then uh, we get to see, you know, a little snippet here. It's very exciting, uh, not only to me, but I'm sure to everyone listening. So, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. So let's just set up. So let's imagine that we are here in this um, spaceship cockpit uh, and we were going to land in the beautiful deadlock. So when I'm going to press activate, we are going to see the land, uh, the landing, and it's going to be a rough landing. And uh, we'll just let you see how it looks like. So I'm going to press activate and we'll see. So yeah, so this was the, wow. this was the landing sequence. So of course it's a bit rough uh the the effects are not fully there yet but as you could see uh, there was some wiggling um you could imagine that on the final build sound effects will be there um, i tried to add some sound effects but they were not f m working really well so probably on the full release um uh, we will have sound effects and as you can see it stopped abruptly but you can imagine that on the full release when it when it stops and it touches the ground there will be a, a huge shake with even more effects but since we're a bit pretty limited right now with the size of the scripts uh, I couldn't add it but you get the you get the idea I can play it again if you want so as you can see, when I, when we land, the player also stays with the, with the, with the the spaceship, and it also shake. There's, if you saw my tweet on the floor that was wobbling, it's the same principle. I use the same noise function to move around the, the spaceship, in a in a noisy way. I use Sperling noise uh, based on the location. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can imagine what it would look like with more budget and more space for the nodes and with working sounds. Yeah, when you, I kept my cool because we're doing it, we're doing an interview, but when you first played that sequence right there, I was screaming uh, in a good way internally because I've I've seen the battle royale uh, scripts that you may have seen. I, I tweeted about this that uh, Schisma is creating, and they created a drop pod um, to land you into their battle royale, a custom game. But uh, your version here uh, is basically just a more advanced uh, version of that because you got, you know, the seats and the, the screen and it looks like an actual ship and it's going forward. Um, I would love to see you two link up for uh, some sort of creation. But anyway, that was uh, really, really cool to see. And I'm sure people who are watching when they first saw that uh, were screaming with joy as well because uh, that yeah that was truly awesome and just and it's just a great example of what's possible with Halo Infinite Forge you know I've shared so many creations and this is just another example of how new um, new and more exciting creations just keep popping up with Forge because uh, everyone keeps saying this corny line but the possibilities really are you know endless. Uh, with uh, Forge. So, anywho, uh, is there any more uh, of this that you want to show, or uh, shall we move on? Uh, no, that's pretty much uh, everything. Just a word on the on the drop pod you talked about. Uh, yeah, I saw that uh, that creation was really really cool, but yeah, it was a, a linear descent. So, what was mm -hmm. the interior was fantastic. It really looked like the, you know. Like in Halo 3 or DST, the, the interior like was pretty, pretty spot on. I was quite impressed. Uh, but yeah, what was missing was the, the shaking. And mm -hmm. if we would combine his, uh, his sequence and this sequence with the, the shaking, I think we will get 
really good results. Yeah, his looked identical to, you know, the actual drop pod. And that's what I meant when I said uh, your version is a little more advanced because of, uh, for example, that shaking. So, yeah, if, we, if he incorporates that as, you know, just another feature for his Battle Royale mode, uh, I would just really take it to the next level. Uh, it already is on another level, but, yeah, that would be exciting to see. So, uh, anyways, uh, that was awesome. Like I said, great job. And uh, let's see what else you have in store for people. Okay, so for the next one, uh, I will just showcase you something that is also related to the uh, the mission map I want to do once the release will be there. So I will just show you uh, the design of um, of one type of enemy will be a, a minor type of enemy like a grunts so really easy to kill um, but there's some cool scripting that is involved uh, and I would like to show you so I will load the map and we'll see very good yeah man I'm that that what we just witnessed was enough excitement. I would have been satisfied if that's all we were doing for this for this uh, interview here. So uh, it's just awesome to see more and more content. It's exciting stuff. But yeah, I think they're gonna like this as much or even more. So let's see what happens. Yeah. So as you can see, the frame rate dropped quite a bit uh, because of a lot of math that is implied. Uh, yeah, that is used for the script, but as you can see, this is will be one of the enemy that you can kill. So it's a, a mech uh, inspired a bit by Mass Effect Two, if you if you can see. But as you can see, it's made of multiple uh, objects that are actually uh, rotating all together. Uh, and this was a bit of the cha uh, a challenge to do. Uh, I will show you exactly why. So if I just bring a sphere in the in the map, so I go in the primitive uh, sphere, and I just take the basic UNSC sphere. Uh, just we'll make it a tiny bit bigger uh, just so we can see okay that should be enough but as you can see the origin point of the sphere is on the bottom that means if you apply rotation to it uh, so if you apply rotation to it it will rotate around that axis point or origin point that is on the bottom of the of the of the sphere and that applies for about every object in forge so that's a big bummer because as you saw when it was rotating it was rotating nicely from the center so i've made my own rotation script for it that implies uh, some vectorial math. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I will show it to you, but it's quite heavy. Uh, but it's it's working. Uh, and basically, what we do is we just translate the object to where the origin point we want. So let's say here. Then we rotate it how we want. Then we translate it back with the new oriented uh, offset from the where it was to the origin point that has been rotated and we bring it back and it rotates to the origin point uh, we want and just to have a good laugh uh, to implement all that i had to implement some rotation metrics which is not complicated math but once you put it inside uh, the scripting of uh, Halo Infinite, you have some monstrosity 
like this, for instance, and this, and this. So pretty unreadable, but it is what it is. I've seen some people that have actually figured out a smarter way to do this uh, script rotation. So probably I will steal their version that is much cleaner than this one. But this one works. So yeah, this script, as you saw, was to rotate a vector. So we have a vector as an input, a rotation also as an input, and we will output one vector. And here we do all the rotation with those uh, nodes. And then in the rotation, uh, yeah, to rotate the object on the new input, we just, as I explained, we, um, we offset the object, then rotate it, and then offset it back with the minus the, the offset that has been rotated also. And this is what we get. A nice uh, rotation for all objects with the same origin point in the middle of the uh, of the of the creature of the robot. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. First of all, uh, this is awesome. <laughs> Uh, seeing this uh, in the early stages and just seeing how you're able to figure out a way to get it to move back and forth and you just explained it. I'm going to pretend like I understood everything you're saying and you explained it, you know, smoothly and quickly in a good way. And But, you know, as someone who is in a software engineer, a programmer, or much experience with, you know, this uh, scripting or, no, or uh, node graph in Halo Infinite Forge, um, you know, it's, for me, it's or people like me, it seems like it's going to take some time to learn how to create things in general, let alone something as awesome as this. But thank you for giving everyone that uh, detailed explanation of uh, how you created it. That's uh, a main reason why I brought you back was to allow you to explain to people how you created these scripts um, using the node graph uh, because people were asking how people were doing it with these awesome creations. Uh, so that was a great explanation. And uh, one question before we move on, how long uh, did it take you to create uh, this work in progress? So for this one, it took a um, few hours, but mainly because I was stuck with this, uh, this script here, uh, trying to make it work because I would do a lot of small mistake of plugging it to the wrong one. And as you can see, since it's not too readable to debug, it's quite a nightmare. Uh, but it, it wasn't long at all. And the cool thing is that... Um, all those scripts that uh, I'm showing you of r rotation and everything, so uh, really basic uh, building blocks for uh, for a, a full map, they will be probably available for everyone uh, in the few days after the release of, of Forge because uh, obviously everyone will share their, their easy to use functions for, uh, through the the prefabs, so right now on the league build is a bit of a pain because we have to build everything from scratch. But once the the full release will be there, uh, all those basics will be available to everyone uh, from the get go. So that wouldn't be a problem. That means even you, uh, you'll be able to use it probably without any trouble. Yeah, that's a great, great point uh, to bring up. And we did uh, discuss this in the first interview. Um, right now, you know, everyone, all the forgers, including yourself, are creating all of this. And however, it's important to remember that in that first Forge Fundamentals video, they did talk about being able to, like you mentioned, being able to save prefabs. And uh, that'll allow everyone to share their creations and, you know, and for people like myself, we won't have to worry about creating them technically. Um, what I meant was, you know, it's just, it's mind boggling just in a, 
it's seeing these node graphs that people uh, that you're creating, the other forges creating, and how uh, you know big they are and detailed and and uh, complicated, and it's just. It's just awesome, and you know, for people like myself, I, I'm not gonna, probably going to ever learn how to create something like that. So it's great that we have the prefabs, but seeing you create it and showing it off and explain it is just um, really cool to see, and um, a lot of appreciation, you know, for uh, what you guys are doing with that. So uh, great stuff there, and uh, let's keep it going. Okay, so for the next um, showcase, I will show you something that I already shown on Twitter which was the floor that was moving uh, along um, along a noise function. So that also relate to the landing synchronous that I showed. It used the same uh, noise, fu noise function, but for two different uh, applications. So that's interesting. So let's, let's see it. Yeah, and again, this is something that you tweeted out and I also shared or retweeted. And again, a lot of people really enjoyed it. When I first saw it, I'm, I was mesmerized. And that's the word I used in the description when I retweeted it. And uh, when, when I did that, uh, all these people started uh, retweeting again and commenting and they loved it. And it was just really cool to see how you can create such a smooth a functioning object or script rather. So anyway, yeah, explain what's going on here. Yeah, so here we have a bunch of column. Um, and so they have a an initial um, position, which is like this. And then for every frame, I will apply um, an offset vertically based on um, this noise function, so the purling noise. And a purling noise, so it can be in uh, any dimension you want. And here I use it in three dimension. So that means this noise function uh, takes three input. So usually X, Y, and Z. And what I do here to give this uh, waving effect is that for each column, I uh, calculate the noise with the X and the Y of the, of the column. And for the Z, I use the time value. I have a separate uh, variable that increments every frame and that uh, represents the time. So that's how we can have this um, noise that evolve because the third uh, input is actually uh, the time, so it uh, evolves over time. And I will show you what it looks like for the... So first, for the setup, uh, it's in this script here. So what I have here is a humongous list uh, that represents every column, and it's all combined together to this column uh, variable. And then for each uh, column, uh, yeah, for each column, I just uh, reference their initial position in a, a variable that is inside each column that is initial position. It is their initial position. And here, um, oops, let me just see if there is anything interesting. Nope. Uh, and here, so for every frame, this is a loop that goes for every frame. I will loop on this for each object on each object of the humongous list here for each column. And what do I do is I take the position, like I said, I take the X and Y and I just multiply it by an offset to... So if you know how purling noise uh, work, you will know that uh, it's usually a good idea to, uh, when you work with coordinate, to multiply those coordinates by a, a small number so the result is a, a smoother uh, noise looking. And then here for the Z, um, for the, yeah, for the Z uh, 
parameter of the noise. So the third one, like I said, I use the time uh, here, which is a, so it increments every frame. And I plug this, so you cannot see here, but I plug this into the input of the noise. Then I trigger the noise. And then this is the output of the noise. And I just add it here uh, to the, uh, to which, ah oh, yeah, to the, to the position, to the initial position of the column. Uh, so here I reconstruct actually the, the new position by taking the x, y of the initial position and that new z value that I, it's just the initial z plus this offset from the noise. And then I just set up the position of the column. And uh, so that's how we get this effect, uh, this effect here. Uh, and if I want, as I said here, if I reduce this uh, offset, uh, well, this multiplier, uh, if I make it smaller, now the noise will look smoother. The waves, uh, if you can call them like this, they will look much uh, bigger, so smoother, as you can see. Um, and if I make it bigger, it will be uh, way more noisy and maybe almost incoherent. As you can see, it looks that almost every uh, every column are independent to each other. It's because the the noise is actually pretty small, so the difference is pretty big between every column. But that you can uh, get a better intuition if you learn about a uh, noise function and Perlin noise. I would, if you're into this thing, I would recommend to start with the Perlin noise because it's one of the simpler noise to implement and understand. Mm. And just go to Wikipedia, and learn about it, and should know everything about it. Yeah, when you tweeted this, you were explaining, or you mentioned the word noise, and. When I retweeted it, I, I didn't understand what that meant. I've never actually heard that phrase before. And so I just simply kind of restated what you said, or I don't even think I mentioned the word noise. Um, so I was hoping you, we would be able to go over this. So thank you for providing a further explanation as what you meant to uh, the noise and all that, and the functioning of what noise is. Um, and seeing this is, I, is awesome because when you – incorporate a script like this to uh, larger objects and, you know, just envision a miniature version of your Spartan here on top of that. So a, a large floor that's moving like that as for an obstacle course or map would be really fun stuff. So um, I'm hoping to see, you know, the, the scripts that you make, um, I hope to see they're implemented into the final build of Forge for just crazy uh, maps and custom games. So, uh, yeah, so I, yeah. anything else you'd like to mention? Yeah, so noise function are really the one of the most important part of um, game uh, making. You use noise function for almost everything. So to make something wiggly, to generate um, textures, uh, you can also, and one cool thing that you can use it is to generate terrain. So Minecraft, for instance, the, uh, if I don't want to say something stupid, but I think the earlier version they were using indeed a um, uh, may, I think a purling noise, yeah, uh, function to generate the terrain uh, because you can actually combine uh, multiple noise function to create even more fine details. Uh, well, if you want to know how to do this, uh, I'll invite you to see, uh, to look online. But yeah, a cool thing that we could do on the release is to uh, create almost like Minecraft-like generated terrain that would be random 
each time you start a game or yeah, like making some, <laughs> we could literally, if it's, if the, the game engine allow it, of course, uh, recreate some Minecraft terrain that is like yeah, fully generated every time uh, you start a, a round inside uh, Halo Infinite. So that would be awesome to do. Uh, fortunately, I cannot really try it on the leaked build because it would require really a lot of uh, memory space uh, for the script. It would evolve a, a humongous script for that, but that's possible and that's definitely something I want to try because that would be awesome. You're just hearing that um, it's, uh, just hearing it's possible is exciting enough, you know, in itself. And I, I can't wait to see that as well. Um, but yeah, continue on. Yeah. Oh, nice showcase of a leak build bug. <laughs> uh, Many of those. I just wanted to show, yeah, for people that are interested how it's implemented. Um, so the noise takes up those uh, seven or maybe just those six, I don't fully remember, but quite a lot of script brains. Uh, let's see. So yeah, no. so this is the 2D purling noise. There is no need. Okay, so it's just those six. One, and if we go to see inside, so I won't explain in detail what's the what the purling noise do, because it would be too long, and I will probably make some mistakes uh, trying to explain it in English. But this is basically uh, I will just go through it, and if people are really interested, they can pause it. Um, That's perfect. But yeah, it's in. The script is so big that it has to be in multiple parts. So this is where the fun begins. Uh, you can see that we do here, we calculate each gradient for each uh, coordinate of the, of the grid. I will just go through it. So if someone is brave enough, can copy it. <laughs> I Believe it or not, there are several people who have shown at least that uh, they have the potential to copy this or attempt to do something like this. Not many people yet, but uh, this is definitely good for the, the forgers who have um, okay stuff. It's great for them to see. Yeah, definitely. So if someone wants to just mess up with noise functions, uh, here it is. And... Now this is, uh, so this is another part of the uh, Berlin noise. And here's a cool trick for maybe some forgers. So this monstrosity here is actually uh, generates um, a random uh, vector. But so we have this node here in math. I think, uh, or maybe not. Oh yeah, get random rotation, which I think give a random vector. But the problem is that it will be random every time. And in Perling noise, what we need for each coordinate of a of a of a cell is that we need a, a so a, a gradient that it will be always the same when we ask for it. And here I have this uh, function that uh, do some pseudo random uh, computing, all this. So it takes um, a 3D vector as an input, then split up each coordinate and generates you uh, consistently a random vector that will be always the same when you ask this function for those exact same coordinate. So that might be useful for some people. It's not something that the nodes provide and it's definitely something really useful. Um, so here it is. Um, it's just all this is uh, how to generate a random-ish 
number based from one number. Uh, it's some computer science stuff. Uh, it's not fully, it's not that complicated, but uh, here it is. If you're interested to it, you don't have to understand it. You can just copy it. And yeah, that's how I get the gradient for the Perlin noise for those that uh, knows uh, how it works. And the last script is the Lerp Smooth. Uh, so it's just the Lerp uh, function, but with a smoothing applied to it, which is uh, required for a, a nice looking noise. Uh, so here it is. So you should have all the building blocks to build your own 3D Perlin noise if you want. Uh, and if you are brave enough, you can also try with higher dimension. First, I wanted to do one in four dimension, but I just gave up because there was too many nodes and it was going to be uh, insane. Uh, so I just kept it 3D, but here it is. Uh, I hope it wasn't too technical, but that might be useful for some. No, again, it definitely will be useful or is useful uh, for the, the forgers. And people who are really studying these videos uh, to prepare for uh, the final build of Forge. So, yeah, again, thank you for that detailed explanation. And with that said, I believe, is there one more or is there, oh, yeah, one more thing you want to show? Uh, I think we're ready to go through the boss map. All right, let's do it.